Sometimes you're having to have sex for like two hours. Like no one ever has sex for like two hours, you know? The weirdest thing I've done on OnlyFans, probably the weirdest one. Um... My name is Sean. I am originally from Glasgow. I'm 28 and I'm a full-time porn actor and OnlyFans content producer. An OnlyFans creator is really someone who has a following who basically puts content out there that their following want to see. So for most people, it'll usually go down a porn route or sex, but it doesn't necessarily have to be that. It can just be the content that your audience want to see. But yeah, for me, it goes down porn. What made me want to start an OnlyFans account? It was a couple of things. I always kind of wanted to do it anyway. It was always the kind of industry I wanted to go into just because it was something that I was quite naturally placed in. I would always get offers from companies and I'd have a lot of people reaching out, but you were always quite, you know, shy. You didn't really, you were too scared to kind of take that first step just based on judgment. But you kind of get to a certain point where you feel that you shouldn't try and take on people's opinions too much. And once you kind of overstep that mark, you then feel more confident in going, do you know what, I'm just gonna go for it. Because I'm a firm believer that if you do something you really want to do and you really enjoy, you'll succeed. And I think most people want to succeed in whatever they do in life, you know? Governments are now being forced to look at the way that people live in a modern world. So you would never really class like an influencer as a real job, but it can be, it is, it is a job, you know, and same with OnlyFans as well. It's not something that's going to go away. If anything, it's something that's getting bigger and bigger. So rather than ignoring the situation, the moment you ignore something, it's just going to get worse and worse. So just address it, be open with it. Don't make it a big taboo. And then, you know, people will be more educated. I definitely hope that having OnlyFans is more normalised and it's not so much, as much of a taboo in years to come. When I think about how far we've came in terms of like gay rights and understanding diseases like HIV and stuff like that, we've came so, so far, there's that stigma is not attached, like hardly, I mean, there is still a stigma, but it, we've came so far from what it used to be like, and I can only hope that doing porn and OnlyFans will go down the same route, but you just don't really know until you're, you're obviously at that point. And one of the judgments that I've faced personally is because of the amount of money that I was making, I've had to set up as a limited company, which means I need a bank to represent me. And I got declined from five, six banks because of the category that my business came under. So yeah, if you go to any bank and you tell them what you're doing and how your business runs, they'll just fly out of you. Even if you're saying, you know, I'm bringing in 150,000 pounds turnover a year, they will not accept your money because of the stigma attached to it, you know? And that is an example of how backward society still is, you know? They just won't, they won't be prepared to represent you as a person. It's just the association, there's no logic behind it. It's just purely what you've been told to think by society that, you know, if someone does porn, they, they do drugs, they, you know, they'll, there's all these bad connotations behind it as well. But most of us are actually really well put together people, you know, and we're credible and we can bring a lot of money to your bank, you know, but people, yeah, we'll just judge it. My parents love it. My parents really enjoy it. Um, they think it's great. I was so scared before I told them, but I was kind of forced into telling them. So I was a PT for like a really high-end company, so I used to deal with a lot of big names. And I think that's the reason why it was a story, because it was like a scandal, you know, like the PT told these like really well-off people, these really high up people in Britain, and then he's kind of doing this behind closed doors. So obviously the newspaper caught hold of it, showed up at my door, asked me questions, told me it was going to be put everywhere. I wasn't ready for that. It's kind of almost being in the closet and being gay, but you're not quite ready to do it. If someone's pushing you to do it, it can be the one of the most awful things ever because you haven't came to terms with how your family are going to react or how people are going to react as well. But when you're forced into it, you've kind of got no option. It's not a nice way, but in a way, I'm kind of glad it did happen because it just forced me to do it. And after that point, you feel so much more liberated, so much more free. And you know that if your mum and dad don't care, then you really shouldn't care what other people really think, you know. People don't understand the, the damage that you can do by saying that to someone because if you didn't have a family that was accepting you, it's, in a way, it's a form of blackmail because you know it's going to come out and you live in fear of oh great, I'm now forced to telling people this, so what's going to happen? And these people don't understand that these threats or 
someone forcing you to do something can really put you in a bad place mentally. If I didn't have a supportive family, you know, I could just done anything because I was so scared of what was going to come out. I think that's the one thing about the media is that it can be great, it can really spread great things for you and it can do a lot for you, it can put you on a good platform but at the same time it can just drag you down like that. But that's the thing, see when you don't have that fear, it just it elevates like what you do and you can just go, the sky's the limit because you can just do whatever you want you haven't got that fear, you don't hold back and the moment you don't hold back you can just achieve so much more, you know. And that's really what happened with me when I was forced to can I go down that route? Weird requests. Yeah, there's some really weird ones. Things like farting, for example. Ones that I've not done, but people just want to see you like, like farting and stuff like that as well. Like toilet sex stuff, it's just really, really odd. It's not something that I would ever do. Because I don't ever want to put something out there that I'm not comfortable in someone else seeing, you know? I had someone who wanted me to lick my lips on camera. Just get the camera, take it to my lips, and just lick my lips for like five minutes, and they would pay. $200 for that. I don't understand it, but at the same time, I'm not opposed to it. Like, you know, whatever, that's fine. If that's your thing, then that's okay. You know, it's not an extreme thing. But that was one of the things that just makes you laugh and go, oh my God. <laughs> the thing about obviously having sex on camera for an audience is that it is so unnatural. Sometimes you're having to have sex for like two hours. Like no one ever has sex for like two hours. Even that in itself is unnatural, but you've maybe got to, it maybe might look great, but it was maybe, the wrong angle so you have to do it again and position the camera in a different way or maybe you know you've started filming at three o'clock by, by the time four o'clock it's starting to get dark so you're going to have to put lights on in the room and all those kind of things. I think when it comes down to having a boyfriend the only thing you can do is just be totally open and totally transparent and just be really good to communicate with each other so if he's got an issue with me doing something it's better that he just says it, even though it might sound like the most stupidest thing at the time and it's just like a silly thing to be concerned about. As long as that person feels, feels comfortable in saying, I've got this issue, I've got this worry, or I'm jealous about something, then it's my job to just put that right, instill that confidence back into him, and then we can just move on. If you try and keep things like hush-hush, or you try to pretend that it doesn't bother you when it does, then it's going to come out sooner or later in your relationship. So in terms of the money aspect, it can really grow. It can really be limitless, to be honest. I mean, when I first started, it wasn't that much. It was maybe in dollars, 4,000, but now you can make in the excess of $20,000 a month. And it's kind of got to a level where I never thought it would get to, to the point where I had to start a limited company. So it wasn't even like a sole trader company, I had to make it a limited company because the amount of money that was coming in had to be really looked at and it had to be taxed properly as well. So yeah, it can, people think, you know, it's not a real job or whatever, but you can make a lot of money. So yeah, I mean, in a lot of cases, it can be over $20,000 a month. Do I find my job empowering? Yeah, definitely. Um, I think from a financial point of view, it's empowering because you'll make more money than what you could probably in any other job, unless you're highly skilled. You don't feel like you need to really rely on someone. You maybe find that a lot of people will look to a boyfriend or a girlfriend to help them financially or emotionally, but because you have a lot of the financial backing yourself, you don't feel the need to be too scared to go out there and just live life by yourself, you know, because you're not dependent on anyone. So in a way, that's really powered in that way. My parents love it. My parents really enjoy it. Um, they think it's great. I was so scared before I told them, but I was kind of forced into telling them. Big story behind it basically being it came out in the newspaper through my job. The newspaper basically printed the article and they put it all over the newspapers. Um, and I was told that it was going to happen. So, I had to tell my mum and dad before it as well because I couldn't have them find out in the newspapers. And that was such a scary moment and I think anyone who's close to their family, they just want that form of acceptance and they want love. They just want to feel that what they're doing is okay. And at the end of the day, you're not doing anything that's wrong. You're not doing anything illegal. It's just a lifestyle choice, but I can understand and most people can understand that it's a, an adjustment that some people find it hard to get their heads around. As for my boyfriend, he's always, he's not known any different, he's always kind of known me to be this way, so I'd, it's not as if it's something that I imposed on him, it was something he was very much aware of, and he just learned to accept it, you know? OnlyFans can definitely be a full-time career. It's my full-time career. A lot of people probably wouldn't think that it is, but it, it definitely is, you know? In terms of the filming, you have to edit the videos, you have to 
put it on social media, you have to make the trailers, you have to do all like the invoice and you have to clear all the tax as well. So yeah, it's definitely a full-time career. I mean, and if anything, it's great because rather than working nine to five for a minimum wage, you can work less hours and make a lot more money. And I think if anyone was presented with that opportunity, most people would say, yeah, that's a great idea.